Sex and for Seconds out, delighted to be joined by a Hall of Fame promoter, Frank Warren. But Frank, we're going to do something a bit different today. Um, you've reached out recently to Eddie Hearn, Match Room, about doing some co-promotional work. So I wanted to delve back into the history books. Um, and just, first of all, tell me when you first met Barry Hearn. I met Barry Hearn through um, a, mu a mutual friend at the time. Uh, called Trevor East, who was the uh, executive producer for Snooker on ITV, and he subsequently went to Thames TV. That's the first time I met him, heard, met him uh, you know, face to face. And what were your first impressions of him? Quite, don't hold back. Quite, I'm like, oh, listen, I don't hold back. He was quite, um, what's the word for it? A bit, you know, he's very full of himself and very, you know, Obviously, making a big name for himself in snooker. And I believe, because we talked off camera earlier, there was previously some competition between the two of you, although maybe you didn't know too much about it at the time, putting uh, machines into pubs, and he was a rival in that business. Well, I, I didn't know him, and I didn't know it was him at the time, but um, yeah, I, I had a business back in the early 70s, and I used to, my partner, we um, used to put pool tables and machines into into uh, pubs and clubs and uh, there was a guy ex-fighter called Freddie King at the time who I understand that he was in, we became involved with him I don't know if he was an accountant or what or part of the business and uh, they also had the same business <laughs> who, who was to know what would develop from there um, when did you first become kind of rival slash collaborators as well? I suppose? Well, he came to me when when he got into boxing. He came to me and he actually came. I remember him coming to my office and he asked if I would if he could you know give me some advice and so forth. And I remember him spending a bit of time in my office and sent whoever he sent down there and uh, yeah, just give him you know, a bit of advice. And then we were going to do a couple, we a couple of shows together. Or we were going to do some shows, but it never it never worked out. And ITV were desperate. Bob Burrows was in charge there and Trevor was there at the time and they were desperate to make, get me and him in bed together. But it wasn't, maybe it wasn't for him, it certainly wasn't for me. What was the advice you gave him? Do you remember the kind of tone of it or what it might have been about? I can't even remember that. <laughs> I can't even remember, you know, it, it, whatever it was at the time. You know, I was doing what I was doing. I was, you know, very, very successful at the time, doing uh, some really good shows on. And, uh, I can't even remember, do you know what, I can't even remember, all I remember is when you, you know, When did you first notice he'd kind of made a bit of a go of it and that you guys might actually work together on some big fights? We weren't working together, I think he made, he, he did a couple of fights and he, he made a fight with um, Bruno and Bugner, I think back then, and Terry Lawless, who was part of the uh, cartel working with Mickey Duff and uh, Jarvis Astaire. Mike Barrett decide. I think they had a break up at one time and he went to work with them. I may be getting this out of context of the timings of it, but that that that, that happened and I remember um, I'm just trying to think, I remember uh, yeah we did we you know we we talked about doing some things together but it, you know it just never happened. Then he came to me and asked if I'd get involved in Snooker. Oh, right. So there he, he he came along and he we put a, a, a syndicate together yeah. of him. Uh, myself and IMG at the time a guy called Bill Sindridge ran it and we they did we did a breakaway snooker tournament and uh, I was I negotiated the TV rights for it at the time I remember that Bill Sindridge had done the overseas and Barry sort of handled all the, uh, the snooker he knew the snooker I knew nothing about snooker he handled the snooker business and uh, if I remember right the um, Said he had a sponsor who fell out of bed for whatever reason. So, you know, we, I think we, I may have had it one or two years, but it was well for me, and we, and we bailed out of it. What did you learn about him when you actually worked together, as opposed to just talking in passing? I didn't really, I, don't, I didn't think about learning about him. Like, you know, it just what it was. It was at the time, and then you know, it got the, and his big break was when I got shot, and I was out of action for a little while, and. Uh, Eubank came along, and I know Trevor pushed Eubank big time with ITV, and uh, and he, he sort of did fairly well. Quite a few fighters and signed a few fighters up, and uh, I had to come back from quite. A, I had a, I had other business commitments at the time. I, I built an arena in London, 12,000 seat arena from London Arena. I was involved in a couple of public companies and so forth. And uh, cut a long story short, they. Um, 
I had to fight my way back, which I did. And uh, the fighters, some of the fighters, and them all came back to me, and eventually uh, he, 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 he bailed out of boxing, out of the business, came out of the business. And all the fighters all, all you know, all wound up with me. His big break came, as you said, when you were shot. Did that ever lead to any suspicions? <laughs> no, I don't think Absolutely not. That's what they look at, though, don't they, when someone gets um, shot or attacked? It's who has the most to gain from their demise. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> he, he certainly, definitely 100%. Didn't shoot him. <laughs> I know, did it? It's good to know. Um, so did you not do any shows together? I'm not sure if we... I'm not... I, I'm, I'm not I can't... Be, yeah, we got, it came to me when we was making... When he was trying to do um, Eubank and Ben, the second fight, and it came to me, he was struggling, uh, and they couldn't make it work financially. And Don King and I were working together at the time, and Don could deliver Showtime. It's needed American TV, so we got them on board. He's on the understanding that the winner fought Michael Nunn. And uh, again, I, tre I remember Trevor East and I went to... Um, uh, Who's the boss at ITV at the time? Um, Roland Rat. Who was the Roland Rat? <laughs> Greg Dyke. Oh, of course. Yeah. So Greg Dyke, and I remember we did a deal. It was over, an, it was over a bank holiday for the TV. We, we did a big. We got a lot of money in those days. A seven-figure sum for that fight to make it happen. Happened in Manchester, and uh, you know, got it on. And after that fight, um, after that fight, uh, Nigel came with me. <laughs> you obviously like your way and, of doing business. And a little while after, so did Chris. What was the experience like of putting on a show together? I mean, you well, he, he, he basically had done, had done, you know, he done most of the work. I, I mean, he, he ran the promotion. It was he, you know, he, he had the box, both boxes under contract. Probably had, so he couldn't get American TV, and uh, and the British TV money wasn't uh, wasn't what he needed. And, and obviously, it was, was going to sell a lot of tickets, and uh, we made that work between us. And, him, I remember him, Don and I had some words in Manchester. Sorry, no, in Birmingham. I had a show in Birmingham. Don and I did a show in Birmingham. Remember we had words over, I won't go into detail, you read about it in my book. Yeah, it's a good plug for the book. You know him pretty well. How are you and Barry different? And what similarities, if any, do you have? Well, I mean, I don't know him well. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm, we've never been buddies or anything. Like that. You know, I, I, been out with him a few times with uh, his wife and my wife. We've been to a few functions together, and, uh, and yeah, he's he's he, he's uh, you know, Barry will say what he's whatever he's got to say to sell something. You know, he'll say whatever he's got to say to make something happen. Um, I don't think I'll tend to some of the things I say, but um, you know, he's been very successful in what he's done. You know, his business and the things he's done, you know, you take your hat off to him like that. Uh, but um, from a boxing perspective, um, I like to think I've got more knowledge than him. I've, you know, I've been brought up with it, that's what I did. I've been doing it since I was 23. Tough negotiator. Not you, we know you are. Well, I think we're all like, look, you can only, when you negotiate, you can only negotiate with the cards you've got in, got in your hand. You know, sometimes, your guy's the champion and he's fighting somebody who's a, you know, a, it's a voluntary defence and you, you want to take the fight, you've got to take what you've got, you're not, you're not going to strength it. If it's a mandatory defence, then you, you, your hand's a bit stronger and you can go to purse bits. All I know is at that time, every purse bit we, went, we had, I won all the purse bits and he went in there with a the, with the champions on many occasions. We've both seen your sons follow you into the respective businesses. Why do you think that is? Well, I didn't know about it. I mean, obviously, they had a better interest in it than I did. I mean, at that time, you know, shows were on Saturdays, they're at schools, they're at school during the, the week, so they were very, obviously, I, I was unaware how um, much they were, you know, how much, you know, how big a fans they were of boxing. Uh, they didn't come to shows until they were a certain age. I didn't want them coming along when they were too young. I didn't let that happen. Um, they were, you know, and it's like, you know, when in this business, you're working 24-7, you're traveling all the time, hardly any of the shows are next door to your house, so, you, you know, I didn't realize how much influence, it sounds stupid, seeing I'm in the business, how much influence they have, but they both, three of them, all wanted to be involved in boxing. It's just interesting, though, because obviously, someone like you, you had a tough upbringing, council, state, and Islington, as you've talked about many times, 
you had to find something, you had to find an earner. Your kids, with due respect, have had a bit more of a comfortable upbringing because yeah. of you and your success. But they've still ended up in this kind of world we love so much. Well, they did very well. My kids are, all went to university, they're university educated, they got degrees. And, uh, because part of you wish they hadn't gone into boxing. I didn't want them to go into boxing at the time. You know, I was hoping they would do something else. But, you know, whatever your kids want to do at the end of the day, you can't live your kids' lives. You know, whatever they want to do at the end of the day, you've got to support them. You know? That's what they want to do, so I have to support them. Reluctantly support them. I didn't particularly want to be an individual, but they're in it and they're very good at what they do in their respective roles. And before we move on to Eddie, one question that a lot of people have been asking on YouTube and social media, I know you don't have much truck with social media, but I want to represent them to an extent. Boxing match, four threes, you and Barry, who comes out on top? Me and Barry? Yeah. In a fight? Well, in a boxing Why match. Why would you even ask that? Come on. <laughs> Come on, on the record. Well, you're have... backing yourself. Oh, I'd much rather, I was gonna, if I was going to fight with Barry, I'd much rather we just go in the room together and the winner comes out. And you and back then, that to me you yourself. Bring, and you bring your camera and you, you're the winner. The winner. So there'd be two of us coming out and it'd be me and you? I would think so. <laughs> Alright, that's good to know. Now, Eddie, obviously, he's had some advantages coming into the sport. He's had the matchroom machine behind him. He's in poker, first of all, before he moved on to boxing. Do you have some respect for him in terms of what he's done with boxing in this country? I know it's, you all say it's nothing you didn't do before, but do you have respect for him reinvigorating the matchroom right brand? Well, he's reinvigorating and he's done a great job. I mean, you know, at the time we got, you know, we, we went on to the sky. Uh, Barney Francis was there, and he was, and it was getting to the stage where they were investing less and less in boxing, and they decided they were going to go with I think it was four promoters: Ricky Atten, Frank Maloney, and uh, Matram and myself. They were going to give us eight dates each, and the money was abysmal. I think for the eight dates, all of them, it was 800 grand. And I just thought, you know, what's this bullshit about? This was them obviously investing all their money in football, and. I had to make a decision. I said, well, if we're going to do our money, I'll be And I said to Barney Francis, we're going to start our own channel, which we did in Fox Nation. So I left about nine months earlier than my contract was due to expire. And uh, the others got hold of it. And I think about eight, nine months later, Match from made, uh, sorry, uh, Sky made a decision to dump Maloney and Ricky Atten, which I thought, why well, they'd done it with Ricky, I thought it was abysmal. But they decided to do that and uh, put their money into put their shows on the match. I think within a couple of months of that happening, BT came into being, and I thought that, and they felt that we were going to sell Box Nation to BT at that time. And they suddenly got their interest back into boxing. If I remember right, it wasn't the fight with Aubrey Harrison and uh, um, David Hay. Oh, right, yeah. Um, that came about. Which is, you know, I know for BT, it's pretty much a disaster. Sorry, BT, I'm sorry. Sky. For Sky. Yeah. Well, that caused pay per views to be paused in this country for quite a while. That caused pay per views to be paused in the fight with David Kane and John uh, Marie? No, the heavyweight. Who's there? The, uh, oh, um, Value Ever. Beats for Beers, yeah. So they bowed out, they were bowing out, and uh, that was it. And but then BT came into being, and they sort of then got back into it again. And cut a long story short, it, it's history, you know. The, the, what made the big difference, the big difference, was Anthony Joshua at the time. You know, he just won the Olympic Games. Um, we were in discussions with him, we made him a huge offer. Bill Ives, who was my partner at the time, was alive. And we made him a massive offer, and he had a, an agent at the time, and the agent convinced him to go with, with um, Sky, because they, he was going to get big endorsements, and that's what happened. Um, and that, that was, you know, to have, at that time, have the might of Sky and their resources and so forth um, behind an Olympic gold medalist who was a massive hero to the fans and, you know, won, his, won the medal in London and on, on, the, on national TV. That wasn't a hard sell. And that, that, was, that was where it all happened. What's Eddie done well? We know he's been he's benefited from Joshua and his fame and the start he got from his dad and match room as a whole. But what's he done well, do you think? He's done well in, in, in his self-promotion. He's, you know, he's a bit like his dad in that world. He's great to promote himself, self-promoted. But he's done well in pulling in, you know, 
the, probably the biggest thing is, is we're convincing the zone to part up with all that money. <laughs> Huge money. I mean, you know, it's a great job that you're doing, and I take the hat to it. But for all that money, they, they, they've not developed one single star. Not one. On the zone, there's not one star that he's developed with all that money. So he did well, but it is it is what it is. So for me, that was that's his pinnacle. If you could choose to swap places with him, would you even consider no, it? No, I don't know. I enjoy my life. You know, I don't mean, I don't mean, I'm, but we've all got our egos and stuff. I don't want to be him at all. I mean, his dad said he wants to be him. You know, that's... I see that. He said if he comes back, he wants to be him. Well, you know, me, I'm absolutely, I'm absolutely delighted uh, with where I am in my life. I've had a, a life, I've been... I've had my ups and downs like everybody is, but I'm really, I'm very comfortable where I'm at. I've got a great family, I've got great kids, and that's all what's important to me. And I'm enjoying what I'm doing. And as always, we're developing stars, and we're developing the stars who are not gold medalists that are living. And the room that we talked about earlier that you and Barry are going to go into and me from a safe distance with my camera, regardless of coronavirus, I don't want to be getting anywhere near it. You and Eddie walk into that room instead. Is it still you coming out? Well, we're going to get into a room soon, whether it's in a restaurant or not. We're going to try and do some deals. So I don't want to. I don't want to complicate it that much. <laughs> I don't want to complicate what we're doing at the moment. But if it's all about me and him having to go into a room together and the winner comes out and gets the prize, let's get in that room. You back yourself every day. I back myself against him every day. Any, anyone, any day. I'm, you know, that's 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 called self-belief. That's believing what you do. That's, that's all macho bullshit. <laughs> At the end of the day, what we're all about is trying to deliver these fights that the fans want to see. Cutting all this crap aside, that's what really matters. And there's a time for a sensible, grown-up conversation now that we can have between us to do something great for British boxing and, for the, you know, and more importantly, for the fans. Brilliant. Frank Warren, it's always a pleasure. Really pleasure appreciate it.